today. AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel go head to head. Intel's 14th and 15th gen CPUs get performance, we get specs, release, and performance info on AMD's next GPUs, and Ryzen 8000 gets one of the biggest performance jumps yet. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, we have an interesting story that gives us an idea of who's buying what in the DIY market between AMD, Nvidia, and Intel. The story comes from a new report by Denawa Research, which covers the South Korean market. So it's not in the US, but I still think it can teach us something really important when it comes to the consumer market. Starting things off, we have CPUs, where you can see that Intel is in the lead with a 57% market share, but AMD is not far behind with 43%. What's cool is that they also break down the percentage of sales even further. As you can see, Nvidia's 13th Gen i5 currently sits at over 36% of sales with a fairly close split of B760 and B660 boards. But when we move over to AMD, their last gen Ryzen 5 parts are dominating with over 61% of AMD sales. While Zen 4's Ryzen 5 gets just 11.32%, then the B550 board sits right at 48% with the B650 at just 20%. This I think shows that consumers just aren't picking up AMD's new platform like they are Intel's, which is likely due to price. Though of course it helps that 13th gen doesn't require a new board. Still, Ryzen 7000 isn't doing all that well for AMD here. Unfortunately, things get much worse when we move to GPUs. As you can see, Nvidia's GeForce GPUs make up a whopping 94% of the market, with AMD at just 5% and Intel's Arc at 1%. With that said, Nvidia's newest GPUs are aren't selling as well as last gen, so they may need to step up if they plan to maintain their massive lead. At the end of the day, this is just one market, but it's still interesting to see how consumers respond to different releases. Next up for today, we have performance for Intel's 14th and 15th gen CPUs. But before I get to that, I've got to tell you one of my favorite ways to learn more about computers, and that's by actually doing it with computer science courses from today's sponsor, Brilliant, the online learning platform that teaches you with more than just memorizing whatever they say and saying it back. That's just boring, and you don't actually learn. With Brilliant, you get in there and do it yourself, like this lesson that helps you learn to think and code by using specific steps to get a car to its destination. It's so intuitive that pretty much anyone can learn some really complex subjects. And with tons of courses from computer science to critical thinking, math, and science, there's definitely something interesting for everyone. And now's the best time to sign up, because when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you can try it out for 30 days free. Plus, when you sign up using brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Now back to the story. Some internal performance projections for Intel's 14th gen Raptor Lake Refresh and 15th gen Aero Lake were recently leaked by Igor's lab. Remember that the Raptor Lake Refresh is expected to release this year, with the real performance jump in Aero Lake coming next year. Either way, let's go over these slides. Starting things off, we have both the Raptor Lake Refresh and Aero Lake SKUs being compared, with the 13900K used as the baseline for 100%. And right off the bat, you'll likely notice that Intel's Raptor after Lake Refresh gets barely anything here, which of course is disappointing, but don't forget that I recently covered the specs for these, and basically, Intel's plan is to up the core count in most every chip except for their i9 models, so they mostly plan to gain performance with more cores, while well, this is comparing SKUs that have the same core count. And of course, if you like learning about PC hardware specs before anyone else, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld. Either way, it's not great to see what's essentially a 2% performance increase here. Luckily, Arrow Lake gets a much better jump with this side getting as high as 21%. That's against the 13,900K, but still. If Intel can keep the core count higher on lower SKUs and have a jump like this, it could be a very impressive release. Not only that, but Igor even shared a comparison between their integrated GPUs, and as you'd expect, the Raptor Lake refresh part has the exact same performance here, but Arrow Lake is over 2 two times faster, getting as high as 2.4 times. At the end of the day, I've gotta say Intel's Aero Lake looks to be worth the wait. 
Next up, AMD is finally gearing up to release their next GPUs, and we have specs, release, performance, all that good stuff. Starting things off, when it comes to the release, we have a new leak from Moore's Law is Dead. According to him, there are two Navi32 SKUs set to be announced at this year's Gamescom, with the actual release sometime in September, and those two GPUs seem to be the RX 7700 and 7800 non-XT parts. As for specs, the top Navi32 SKU apparently comes with the total board power of 260 watts, 60 CUs, and 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. Next is the cut down SKU, or likely the 7700. It has a TBP of 245 watts, between 48 and 54 CUs, and 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Apparently there's a more powerful Navi31 variant with 70 CUs, but according to the leak, it likely won't launch anytime soon. And when it does, it'll release with limited supply. Now what's really interesting is that shortly after after this, a leaker on Twitter shared benchmarks of the RX 7700 non-XT and 7800 non-XT, making these more than likely what AMD is in fact releasing. And when it comes to those benchmarks, they're from 3D Mark's Time Spy, and they do pretty well. The RX 7700 gets a graphics score of 15,568, which is certainly faster than Nvidia's new 4060 Ti. Of course, the 4060 Ti will likely win in ray tracing, but don't forget that the 7700 is expected to drop with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So as long as AMD can keep the price around Nvidia's 8 gigabyte model, it'll definitely look good. Next is the 7800, which scores 18,957, and that actually puts it below the 4070 Ti. But really, like I say pretty often, it mostly depends on price. AMD could have a couple winners, or they could be way overpriced. Time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, we have a huge story on AMD's upcoming Ryzen 8000 CPUs. In a new leak from Red Gaming Tech, he goes over a huge amount of information that he's been hearing in regards to AMD's next gen, and it's pretty amazing. Starting things off, we have updated specs, with it unfortunately still being the same number of cores as Ryzen 7000. Of course, that's not a huge issue, but because Intel's been moving so high in core count, it would have been nice to see it. With that said, given the performance he's talking about here, AMD likely won't need more cores. Sure, you may notice Zen 5 has the same L3 and L2 cache, but AMD apparently plans to get all the way up to 6 GHz with next gen. That's likely with their Ryzen 8950X model, but still, it's really impressive to see how far Ryzen has come in terms of clock speed, but that's really not the biggest news. When we move over to this slide, we see that according to this, Ryzen 8000 is set to get a massive IPC increase over the 7000 series. In fact, we're looking at over 20% in single-threaded performance, making this, I'm fairly certain, the largest IPC increase in Ryzen's history. Even Zen 2 to Zen 3 was 19%. And for reference, Ryzen 5000 to 7000 was an average IPC increase of just 13%. So being in the 20s is a big deal, and that doesn't include clock increases. Basically, if this is right, Ryzen 8000 is shaping up to be a serious performance increase over current gen. And actually, if these numbers are right, Ryzen 8000 should beat Intel's 15th gen. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen GPUs, or are you just waiting for more RX 7000 GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!